this is what we're going to go ride today. And if the rain holds off long enough, I'm going to come back and take out that with the new Olin shocks. And I just uh, uploaded a new map I made into that to give it a much more aggressive throttle. And some additional fuel trims and a little bit of a different ignition timing. So I want to be able to see how that feels. But I'm also going to do a before and after of the Ducati. Actually, let's check and make sure we have flashy lights. Good, we're recording, yay. So, this is a 2022 Monster Plus made by Ducati. It uses a 900 and something CC L-Twin that is borrowed from the Supersport 950 as well as uh, the Hyper Motard. Brembo monoblocks, braided lines, radial master cylinder, big discs, full TFT dash with, I believe it's got an IMU, and it's got traction and launch control, and all kinds of good stuff, ABS, everything you'd ever want. What's this chowder head doing? They don't know where they're going, so... Anyway, so let's do a little ride review and see what it's like. Seating position's good. Seat is Ducati. It's hard as a rock. I don't know that I would, if this was my bike, this is my wife's, I don't know that I would keep that seat. I might go for a comfortable seat and repad it. Brakes are very touchy. Torque. It's good. It wants to lift the wheel very easily at first. So this bike has EvoTech frame sliders, some kind of phone holder thingy, which I don't care for. I don't need to see my phone while I'm riding. It's got these really nice aero mirrors billet. Um, and it has a $2,700 Terminioni race exhaust. So they call it a three-quarter system. It does keep the headers, but the cat box and everything else gone. And some nice high-flow mufflers. Scoot. It's got some nice torque. Throttle response in sport mode is just crisp and immediate. A little luggy down at low revs. Ducatis tend to be that way. We're going to go to the right. I'm going to get rained on less. We'll go this way. Why am I using the clutch, dummy? Because my ZX14 and my Speed Twin both have conventional shifters. This has shift with auto blip that was about a third throttle in first you just goose it a little bit and it brrrr, comes up and what's nice is the at least in the default settings here in sport it actually lets it ride the wheelie out a little bit before gently pulling power and putting it down I've had other bikes that have wheelie control and it just slams the front which makes you look like you don't know how to do a wheelie yeah, it's a good chance they're laughing at me anyway. So, power's good. Um, I reckon this one, oh, it looks like rain up there too. Damn it, I cannot get a break on this weather, man. The weather in Atlanta has been so bad this year, so atrocious. I probably put on, I would say, 4,000 miles less than I normally would have at this point in the year. It's just, it's just like living in a rainforest. It's like we're in Florida. It's cloudy, you get a little bit of sun during the day, and then it just rains every freaking day. Anyway, enough of me bitching about the weather. This is supposed to be about like acceleration it really is strong it's got a very linear torque uh, curve there's no real big spike it just pulls and yeah, we'll do a roll on in a second up here let's see I right, watch the tack yeah that's got it's got good pull um, it doesn't have the torque of the Speed Twin 1200. It also doesn't have the weight of the Speed Twin. So, 
at the wheel, this should be making about 100 horsepower. It's got the Termignoni kit, lightens it up, adds a couple horsepower. It also has the uh, up map from Ducati that goes with that. And I'm getting some raindrops on me, goddammit. Oh, that brap sounds good. You hit that a quick shifter on uh, auto blip and you just brap. Wasn't sure what lane they were going in. Quick shifter's good. Although it definitely, it's a little, little bit lurchy. Damn it, running right into the rain. We're going to turn around and go back the other way. It does this all the time, too. I'll leave my house and it's sunny. I get one mile from my house and it'll be pouring freaking rain all the time. And over there, that's heavy rain. So, we're going to make a Yui head back. Oh, little wheelie, unintentional. These are Rosso 3 tires. They're solid, they're good. so far it's got the right it's got a good seating position to be aggressive but i'm fairly upright now i also have long arms are you gonna run the light or not all right good i would say i would gear this down one tooth in the front I think it's geared a little tall when you're getting off when you and that's another thing i've noticed with ducatis over the years i mean i've owned nine or ten this is my wife's fourth i think so we've had a pretty good sampling over the years and ducatis come geared from the factory really tall and when you've got a torquey lumpy v twin the cam profile and stuff is really geared towards mid-range and and still have a top end rush and when you give a when you gear a, 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 a twin for a good top end hit of power, the, the trade off is normally down low. It's a little luggy. You gotta have a minimum certain number of revs or it bucks a little bit. And so I do feel that on this bike. Um, so your parking lot manners, you have if you're making tight turns at slow speeds in a parking lot or a roundabout or something like that, you're gonna be feathering the clutch a little bit to keep your revs up so it doesn't get kind of lurchy. Um, it does feel a little herky and jerky down there. That will also help the acceleration. Um, just looking at the speeds we we're hitting, you're not going to do 145 on this bike. This thing, I'll have to look up the gearing charts, but I would imagine this bike, theoretically, if you could bounce off the rev limiter in six, the top speed would be somewhere up around 150s. You're not going to do that on this bike. So, and I know my wife isn't, so I would gear it down. That'll make easier launches, less grabby, more oomph. It'll give you stronger acceleration all through the rev range at the expense of maybe on the interstate. You're going to troll along at, I don't know, 300, 400 RPMs higher without being able to get on the interstate. I mean, here, you hear that lugging? I'm going 50, yeah. I would gear this bike down. In six gear, the revs dropped enough that uh, the motor was getting luggy. Now I can say, well, don't run it in that gear and stuff, but I think it'll launch easier. It'll just give it more poke, better throttle response. Going, gearing down bikes, and I've gotten into some lively discussions with folks recently. Most bikes do come from the factory geared tall. Uh, you know what, let's go straight. Maybe it's not raining that way. Yeah, just effortless wheelies. It's going to make that wheelie more. It will make it a little more wheelie happy. But when it comes up like that, it just lets you ride it out a little bit and puts it down soft. Very impressed with that. So that's the first thing I would say. So far, I really like this bike. It, it's got the right sound. It's obviously got the looks. It's a Ducati. A little gearing change will give it a little more urgency to that acceleration, and you're not going to really lose top speed. And that's the thing. Like a lot of bikes, like look at my ZX14. It's geared to do 208 out of the box. 
that bike is not going to do 208 miles an hour. You, know, you can unrestrict the ECU and all the tunes, all that stuff I've done, and it's putting 195 ish and 110 foot pounds or so at the wheel. It's still not going to go 208 in stock form like that. Well, semi stock form. It's just not. So gearing a bike down so that you're actually can hit your theoretical top speed, it's a balancing act. You don't want to go gear too low to where. It's, it's really buzzy and frantic all the time at highway speeds. You want to be able to just kind of cruise along and not just have it revving the nuts off of it, and wasting fuel. But you also don't need it geared to do 20, 30 miles an hour, and maybe in this case, the fastest you're ever going to go. I would, I'm going to look at the gearing charts. I have a feeling we can gear this bike down a little bit and make it nicer. Now, the other thing I would say is the suspension. It doesn't feel bad. Um, the damping is okay, but it's non-adjustable in the front. And I don't know what the back, I think the back just has preload. The front has nothing, nothing you can do. It just is what it is. The brakes are a little, not pulsy. There might be something on the brake pads. I noticed that it, it grabs and releases, grabs, releases a little bit. I don't feel any shimmy. I don't think there's any warped rotors. Might be just when they polished it. Sometimes they get a little bit of polish on part one part of the rotor. So you feel that little less friction there. Um, let's see, what else? I mean, the controls are easy. You want to pick a different ride mode. You just hit that button, hit the mode button and then select your modes and go in and turn on your quick shifter, change your wheelie control, ABS, Ducati traction control. You got a fuel meter, it's good. Um, tachometer is easy, easy enough to read. Um, you got your gear indicator, air temp, trip temperature. I mean, all the things you really want are all there, so. I'll tell you, man, tip in. This is a very agile bike. It's just... You think about turning, and it just burp, flops into the turn. Yeah, I feel that brake thing. I'm going to need to get up and go fast, and then do a, a strong brake and see if I can burn off whatever's on there. I've just seen that with new bike. Well, it's not a new bike. It's slightly used. Um... A lot of times the guys get a little slap dash with the uh, spray polish at the dealer when they detail it before they deliver it to you. And then you end up with that. But that's an easy fix. The brakes are very strong, I'll tell you. This is a Brembo. I think it's an RCS master cylinder, steel braided lines. I want to say those are M50 or M430. That might be M43, M432s. Either way, they're Brembo monoblocks on a light bike with... Thing you'd want. Yeah, man, this the Termi kit, man. There's, there are very few bikes that sound better than a Ducati. Um, Ducati V twins with Termi kits just sound the balls. Um, other bikes I would say are in the category. Just to give you an idea of what I'm referencing, Aprilia V fours sound amazing. Yamaha R one. Amazing sounding, of course, because it sounds like an Aprilia. But that lumpy bark, just instant bark. Oh, it's probably pouring at my house right now. Son of a bitch. I cannot catch a break. I literally saw sunlight outside, so I'm like, okay, now's my break. I go out and instantly there's thunder showers from nowhere. Yeah, the down, down a tooth on the front sprocket is definitely gonna make that better. I'm gonna have to wash her bike, damn it. Maybe I won't tell her. I don't know if she watches my video, so maybe she won't know. It'll be our secret. So the suspension feels good, but it's 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 slightly sprung. Um, if this were my bike, I would probably be doing cartridges in front and replace the shock. 
Um, the Monster now comes in just the base model, and then they call it the Monster Plus. The Monster Plus adds like this piece of plastic and another piece of plastic. There's nothing mechanical. It's not like going to an S model where you're going to get, uh, you know, better suspension or, you know, things like that. Um, what I would want to see, you know, when I buy this bike, what I would want to see would be like an S model. And here's my critique of the bike. I think it looks the part. It's beginner friendly, but it's got more than, I mean, 100 horsepower is, it, you know, compared to today's fire breathing dragons, you know, that you can buy, like the ZX14 R1, and basically any leader bike, Super Dukes, MT10s. Yeah, you're going to look at this and go, ah, it's mid range. It's not an engine 300, it's, you know, but it, it's a mid range bike. And that's what it's supposed to be. But 100 horsepower, I mean, think about where we were 20 years ago when you had like a CBR 929 or something that was like the king of the, the sport bike heap or something, 954. I mean, those bikes made a little more power, but I mean, 100 horsepower wouldn't be much off of that, you know? 100 horsepower is where Jixxer 750s used to be, and those were the sport bikes of their days, you know? So it's, it's definitely... Um, it's, it's enough to get yourself into trouble, but it shouldn't be intimidating. And if you're a new rider, that, this sport mode is touchy. I mean, you just goose it, it just wants to go. So you put it in road or urban mode, and you'll drop the power. So this is a bike that, for me, I would like to see an S model. These retail for new for about 13 grand for the plus. For me, I feel like the suspension should be better. Granted, my Speed Twin was also 13 grand, and it had non-adjustable forks, and the shocks weren't enough either. So maybe my expectations aren't realistic enough in today's world. But I feel like the Speed Twin, I look at, I think that's a different market you're selling to. It makes a little bit less power. It's more of a classic, while still being sporty enough to be exciting and you know be fun. But then you've got, um, you know, this is a naked sport bike. It's super light, it's agile. You've got the brakes, you've got the power, you've got the rider modes and the electronics. It's got the performance. And I'm not saying you need Olins. Most people don't need Olins. I don't need Olins. I don't even think a bike like this needs Showa, um, I will go down a little further, needs uh, Showa um, big piston forks, which I'm a big fan of those. I think you could get away with something like a Sax semi, you know, adjustable shock in the back. And for the forks, I would do like the Showa single function fork, like the ZX6R has. It keeps the cost down, but it gives you preload in one fork, I think. And then the other fork, maybe it's preload in both, but one fork only has the damping or something like that, I forget. But it's something like that where you save some money while still getting a somewhat adjustable and competent system. That to me seems like that would be a, a good compromise. And to me, that's what the Monster Plus, if you say, okay, you got the Monster for 12 grand, you get the Plus, and you throw in a Showa single function fork and the piece of plastic and a Showa or a Sax, you know, just a basic but adjustable shock, I think that that would be totally worth it. I think that would be tremendous value because bikes like the Street Triple RS765 has the same electronics pack. It doesn't have an IMU, but it's got basically the same electronics. It has quick shift and auto blip. It's got Brembo's, but at the same price point, it makes more power, makes less torque, but it's got more peak horsepower. It's in the same weight class. And it comes with Showa big piston forks up front, which are good forks. And it comes with an Olin's, I think it's like an RTX 36 or something shop. So at the same price point, you're getting a significant step up in, in suspension components. While everything else is on par. Brembo, Auto Blip, TFT, LED lighting, all that stuff. So that's my <laughs> that's my opinion. This bike is a hell of a I mean just instant. I didn't give it more than 30% throttle there. I just blipped it to 30% and the front just goes brrrp and comes right up. This is a fantastic bike. Yeah, except there's something weird going on with the brakes. They're surgy. 
but they're not shuddering. It's definitely not a warped rotor. I'm gonna have to put this up on a stand and clean those things. It's an alcohol brake cleaner. What do you clean brakes with? Oh yeah, there's this stuff called brake cleaner. So, very nice. Definitely digging the bike. It feels great. It looks great. It sounds great. Other than needing some 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 suspension. But for my wife, I don't think that matters. I just look at how soft that is and not a lot of rebound. It kind of comes up and bounces a little bit. I would want to just see a little bit better damping. And maybe that's something where hey, you put a little stiffer spring in and some thicker oil. The shock. Oh, fuck, I got a stupid remote in my pocket just pushed. Yeah, there's no adjustment other than a little bit of preload collar. That'd be what I want to see change on this for me. That's to me, that would be a plus model. You're not getting the fancy single sided swing arm of the Street Fighter or any of that stuff, but it's a pokey little motor, man. It just wants to go, it likes to rev. A little bit of a gearing change. I think that's all this thing basically needs for her. For me, it would need some suspension. I could ride it, be a good commuter and comfortable and all that, but I wouldn't do really aggressive mountain riding for me with that suspension. I think it'd be a little wallowy. So anyway, I'm going to stop recording here, see if I can wait for it to dry out a little bit more again and go back out, do a back-to-back -back comparison with that. So if you don't see that, it's because the weather turned to shit and uh, I just gave up and threw this up without that. So that's my ride review. It'd be nice if I'd gotten a longer ride in, but I don't want to be, you can't really go hit some twisties and have fun and see what it's really like. And it's not my bike, it's my wife's. So if I end up crashing it in the rain, being an idiot, she's going to be pissed. So there you have it. 22 Monster Plus. Really like these uh, turn signals. Those are um, aftermarket as well. Looks like a freaking Audi. I mean, look at that. That was really nice. Some nice tasty mods. It's a cool bike. Anyway, there'll be more content. We'll get a longer ride out. So that'll be my first impressions video. And then maybe she'll let me take it up to the mountains and I can play a little bit. All right, are we recording? Do I see a flashy red light? I do. So, you can see, it's sunny out. The roads are dry. Let's see how far I get before it turns to shit again. So we're gonna go out and do a back-to-back -back ride. Or as near as we can do back-to-back. -back. The Speed Twin versus the Monster. All right, so I just did an ECU reflash on this, changed to a more aggressive throttle map, reset adaptives. Huh. Okay, that feels different. Good. Let's see if it smooths out a little. Might be a little snatchy. Below 5% throttle, your maintenance throttle. I might want to dial that back just a tad and save it for anything over 10%. Make it more linear. But it's trial and error. I will say it does pick up faster. Oh, and it willies. <laughs> Wasn't doing that before. <laughs> Ah, this bike is fun. Yeah, so let's get out, get it up to temperature, and go play a little bit. It feels good up top. But it's a little twitchy. You know, you can probably look where I'm barely touching that throttle. Little movements make a difference. So I will probably step it down just a little bit and kind of figure out in the, if you're just cruising along where that maintenance throttle is, where you're probably at 5% or less, I might put that back to stock and then from five or six or 7% up, that's where we'll get into that aggressive power curve. It's trial and error, you know. You don't know how it'll react. 
So the one thing that I'm, I'm liking the map so far though, other than that little bit of twitchiness, lunginess down at low revs. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, it definitely picks up quicker, man. Front just wants to come right up. This is stock gear. This is not geared down. This is stock exhaust, stock air filter. All we've done on this thing is uh, remove the intake snorkel and just pulled the DB killers out of the stock mufflers. I didn't do an X-pipe yet. Yeah, feels good. Nice torque. It doesn't have that top end zip of the monster. It doesn't have that sense of urgency. But I don't know that it's pulling really much less than the... the, the it's like, I think it, it, it has more grunt. I mean, it just instantly wants to pick up. Um, but then as you rev, the revs don't climb as fast. And back we're on the fucking wet roads again. God damn it. You really just cannot... I cannot win with weather. Every time I go out, I'm like, it's sunny, it's dry. And it's like my house is in this little bubble. And the second I get out of the bubble, I get a mile down the road, it's friggin' raining again. It's very annoying. I'm about to wash all the shit off the bike that's flying up all the road slop. But, uh... Acceleration's brisk. It feels good. You know, when we were, I was doing a little roll race on the interstate on the, uh, the other day with Donna on her uh, monster and me on this. And uh, she pulled away, but not as much. And when I think about the 150-pound, 160-pound weight difference between me, the bike, my bike being heavier and I'm 100 pounds heavier than her, it's a... Uh, she pulled away like not a bike that was faster necessarily. She pulled away like a bike that just had less weight to lug around. I think that if uh, we were to normalize it for the weight, I think this thing would stand toe to toe with the monster. Now my forks, you know, I was critiquing her bike. The forks on hers are really soft. My forks on this, the um. The shocks were shit for my weight, although these old ones feel really good. Um, but the stock ones were just, you know, kind of wallowy and stuff. Yeah, I don't get this. It's it's sunny and blue skies, but it's just, everything's wet. Water, warden everywhere. At my house, it didn't rain at all. I'm not even a mile from my goddamn house. I know it sounds I'm bitching a lot with the weather, but when, all your, when your only real hobby is riding, and it's a, for me at least, it's a weather dependent hobby and it just does nothing but it rains five days a week. It drives me friggin' bonkers. And up there, there's no rain, it's dry. It's just, anyway, um, and it's always just wet enough for me to have to, now I gotta go clean the bike. So, what was I saying? Yeah, the forks on this are, are they're not adjustable, but they've got good damping. They actually did a good job on the uh, on the refresh for the new model. So one of the things I'm trying to figure out about the map for this bike, it's pulling really good. It's very smooth. I don't feel these flat spots. That more aggressive throttle, like it's snappy, it's good. I might tone it down a little bit under 5%, but maybe I'll just adapt to it. Um, it's still, I had to reset adaptive, so it's probably gonna go through a little bit of an adjustment phase as it learns my riding and adjusts a couple things. Um, but one of the things I'm trying to figure out now is there's no, so when, when we go through the mods that I've been doing, which is adjusting the ETV3 table for sport to get rid of the throttle restriction, so it's now linear, it's not holding back. When you give it 100%, it gives you, you know, you, you give it 100% throttle, the motor delivers 100% on the throttle bodies. 
instead of 80% or whatever it was doing before, I noticed that it's only applying that to gears one through four. And I thought when I was riding this before, I'm like, wow, you know, one, two, three, four, they feel great. But when I get up into the higher gears, it doesn't feel as snappy. It feels like it's struggling a little bit. And I assumed it was because, well, by the time you're in fifth and sixth, you're going faster. And therefore, you're, um, you know, you have more wind resistance. So, of course, you're not going to feel the acceleration as much as you would in first and second. It's not going to pull as hard up there. First and second, you don't really have any wind resistance pushing you back. Well, I come to find out that on this bike, when you do those throttle mods, and if you follow my other videos, it only does them in gears one through four. Five and six are not an option. If you go to the speed uh, street triple RS, when you make your ETV changes to unrestrict it, it does it all the way up. It does it neutral and gears one through six. So you're unrestricting all the gears. Apparently on this bike, I can only unrestrict one through four. Now you might say, well, that's, you know, if you're up playing in the mountains, that's where most of your power is. And, you know, I mean, you know, that's where you're gonna spend most of your time or in those gears, so that's not really a big deal. Okay, that's a fair point. But it also, um, took ahead a couple little back roads. It, 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 you know, you get rid of the, um, the top speed limiter on this, which I did. Well, if it's restricted in fifth and sixth by the throttle plates and it doesn't give you full power, then you don't have the option of even hitting the stock speed limiter, which was 134 miles an hour anyway, you weren't going to hit that because the motor was pulling power above 6,000 RPMs, dropping you down to 81% power in 5th and 6th, even though it was de-restricted in the first four gears. So, yeah, anyway. Oh, it just started to wheelie in second. Didn't do that before. Huh. Yeah, whatever I did, it made it a little twitchy down low, but man, did it wake the shit up everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I had just rolled on. I didn't whack it or bounce it. Literally just... Maybe I had a little dip in the road or something. I don't know. Now, this is definitely pulling harder. It, it really is amazing. You, you think, well, how much can those throttle? You know, the motor only makes what it makes, so you're not tuning it, so you're not technically making more horsepower, so how could it make that big of a difference? Well, go put your bike in, any bike, put it in sport mode and ride it, and then put it in rain mode. How much do those throttle ma maps make the bike feel different? <laughs> like, you can really change how the bike performs. You're changing the application of throttle and how it translates into power when it delivers it, how quickly it delivers it. At the end of the day, that the bike makes 92 horsepower at the wheel, it still makes 92 horsepower at the wheel. But when you give it 50% throttle and it's only giving you 21%, when you change all of that, not just doing it up top, but you do the quick throttle mod. So uh, this is this is a hybrid. This is a more of a aggressive than my original one, which was leave it stock in rain and road, and then in sport only go to the you know the top columns and just to get rid of the limitations but leave everything else the same i didn't touch the mid-range this time around i did go and change the mid-range and it made the bike almost too aggressive down low when you're just barely rolling on two three four five percent so i'm going to go back and tweak that down just a little bit but everywhere else like you just you just goose it and it just wants to go and it's wheeling in now in first, like, really easily. It's starting to wheelie in second, if I'm not careful or paying attention. Like, it's definitely changed how the power is delivered. And it's not placebo. It, again, if you think, oh, these things can't make much difference, well, go ride your bike in rain mode. You got a ZX-10? You got a street triple or speed? Go ride it in rain mode instead of sport, if you think it doesn't make a difference. Because on modern bikes, they're not using different fuel maps. They're not cutting ignition. They're not doing things like that. When you go into a different ride mode, you go from sport to track to this. Yeah, I might be changing ABS and traction control and other things, but as far as engine power, 
you're not changing the fueling of the bike. The fueling's always the same. What you're changing is, when I turn this, what's the ECU gonna do about it? Is it gonna say it's rain mode, you're only getting half power. No matter what you do, it's gonna come on slow and it's never gonna open the throttle plates more than 60%. We're gonna make it not just cap the power by only, it'd be like you were only allowed to turn the throttle 60%. Well, how much power would you make? Well, not as much as if I was allowed to twist it all the way. Here, the difference is you could feel like you're twisting it all the way, but it's not giving it to you all the way. Now it is. Now it is very linear. It's very direct. There's no lag. You give it gas, that thing just came way the hell up. <laughs> the bike was not doing that before. It would come on gradually, and then you wouldn't start to get more power. You wouldn't get that power needed to wheelie like that until you're up getting close to your peak power, which is where it's going to start dropping off shortly thereafter. Now I'm getting into the power much quicker, and it's just burp coming up. So I, I, I'm, unde I'm undecided if I'm going to dial back below 5%, just a tweak. Or if I'll leave it and just learn to ride around it. You know, if I want to just be tame and cruise on the interstate, I can always drop it into road mode. But here, it's kind of cool because it's feeling very feisty, very hooliganish. And so, I don't know, I might leave it there. So. But all in all, that was a very, I would say, God damn it, can't get the fucking backside chalk in there, right? That was a successful remapping of the throttle. That gave me what I wanted, man. This thing just wants to lunge. Alright, let's go ahead and pull up the map and show you what I'm talking about here. My tablet. Oh, it's not going to unlock. Because I can't. Uh, I don't want anyone to see my pin number. <laughs> Hold on a second. There's ETV3. You'll notice now it's very linear. The values are all very close to where it was. These were all delayed. At 23, you were getting 15%. At 38, you were getting 27%. At 46, you were getting 37 or 39%. So everything was delayed. You'd give it a bunch of gas, but it wasn't it wasn't really giving you that so now whatever you're dialing it to is pretty damn close now i did soften it a bit down here maybe i just need to learn around around it maybe it's just getting used to it maybe it'll just smooth out a little bit it just felt a little bit snatchy down low but i guess it wasn't more than that i just noticed a difference but it, everywhere else it felt great rather than take 20 minutes to flash the ecu again i may just leave that yeah, I'll just leave it and learn to ride around it for now and see if it bugs me. But, um, yeah, you can see how it just wants to wheelie now, and it was wheeling, like, a lot. <laughs> um, that was a good mod. Some of it might have been the fueling changes, but a lot of it came from that throttle. So I'll make that map available for those that want it. So anyway, I'll shut this down and stop yapping and get to editing, and I'll talk to you guys later.